Hey, good morning, Top Fans. Bill from Top Fan Rivalry here uh, with another guest in the clubhouse. This time I got Jamie in and she's got an awesome story. Good morning, Jamie. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. We might actually get a special guest in one of my cats who thinks it's time for her to be on Zoom too. So if you see the cat go across the screen, just know that she's, you know, probably a Dodger fan too. Roll with it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jamie, you've got an interesting story. You've been writing for Top Fan, I would dare to say, probably for the last whole year. And see, there's a cat. Um, and for some reason, your articles have been getting, uh, not some reason, but your articles have been getting a lot of play because um, of what you say and how you say it. So, first of all, tell me, you are, you, how did you become a baseball fan? Let's start there. Oh, uh baseball has been a part of our a part of my life for like ever um I started off as a Giants fan uh, so I was growing up in San Francisco so it's kind of inherited once you once you're born in San Francisco especially being a fifth, fifth generation San Franciscan um it's kind of like uh you need to be a Giants fan uh it's like it's written in like some contract when you're born at the hospital, they say, and she'll be a Giants fan. Uh, none of this A's, BS, no, she will be a Giants fan. Uh, <laughs> so as long as we're clear, right? Yeah, as long as we're clear, she needs to root for the 49ers and she needs to root for the Giants. And I actually root for neither of those teams now. Um, like at all um I don't even watch football um maybe some college football now and then because college football is just amazing but well that's a totally different subject but I am no longer a Giants fan and the reason being is that I can't I can't stand for a, a team that's used as a corporate commodity and it just it is so blatant when you're looking at even the field and at how many times they've changed their park name, um, the fans that go, well, I wouldn't even call them fans. I'd call them the corporate people who go there because they get free tickets. I just, I can't, I can't stand by that. And I can't stand with a team that allows that where um, I went to my first Dodgers game with you and um, I fell in love with Chavez Ravine. I mean, really that park is just amazing. Um, it was one of the parks on my bucket list and I got to go there and I'm so, I feel so blessed. So now it's Fenway and um, Wrigley or, and now Field of Dreams is my top three that I need to visit before I die. And uh, yeah, I just, last season, I was so mad that, you know, COVID took Justin Turner out um, of the World Series <laughs> in the seventh inning. And I just, I, I did not like Justin Turner. I really did not. My husband and I had like this huge conversation about why don't you like Justin Turner? I'm just like, I just don't like Justin Turner. He's just, he's a jerk. And then I saw him get like yanked from the World Series. I'm like, oh, poor JT, oh my goodness. And yeah, I became like an instant fan, like right then and there. <laughs> fan. I mean, and also, Cougars, com Cougars commercial, shouldn't that be enough? I mean, can't well, remember. also I love Muncie. And I watched Muncie come up as an A and just be like completely like dejected by the A's franchise. And like they they used him as like cannon fodder most of the time. So it's like I uh, see him thrive and like do so well as a Dodger. I it just makes me so happy and it makes me so sad that he's not going to be in in the NLCS. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just saw the the rosters uh, about ten minutes ago, and he's not on there. Hopefully, if the Dodgers advance, hopefully he makes the the um, the World Series roster. I mean, I'm praying. Yeah, that yeah. that is always that's that's a constant prayer. Like, please let him. But we want him to be healthy, you know. So if it takes time and he doesn't play, you know, it, it's we're not like the Angels. We don't rely on one you know player to make our team. Um, and you know, we're a family. So I think we showed that in this last series, the, we can get things done even without two key players. You know, it's, uh, it's funny that you say that because I follow top fan follows 
a lot of athletes, minor league athletes, uh, MLB athletes, and a lot of their spouses. And it's interesting how much I, I saw one of the wives of the Dodgers posted a thing where she was having like a watch party before the game, um, before they went up to San Francisco, before game four. And there's like 15 of them there. And it's interesting how much the wives are integrated into the husband's careers. And it's not about money. It's not about the stereotypical stuff. It's just, it is very much so a family. So that's, I I love that. Yeah, that, that is one of my, that's one of my favorite things. And it's just, it makes me wonder when someone's not doing good, like, did they see their family enough before they went out? I mean, did they have that quality family time? And I know Roberts is really good about, you know, family on the field and, you know, making time for family. So I, that, that really strikes uh, home with me. Uh, yeah. I'm very family oriented. Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. So uh, top fans, as you're listening to this, yes, you heard this right. Jamie grew up in San Francisco. She was a Giants fan. She's actually a converted Dodger fan. If you have not read her article yet, she talks about this at the beginning of the season and how she she got converted. So if you haven't read that yet, by all means, read that. Another article that is, because we're going to talk here about the division series, another one of my favorite articles that she's written um, was Angel Hernandez is no angel. So if you haven't read that yet, by all means, uh, you got to read that. And and so, Jamie, let's talk. So you had the Divisional Series, a team that you grew up loving and now a team that you're passionate about. So how did you see it differently now? I mean, five years ago, you would have said, oh, they hated Dodgers. Now this year, you're seeing it totally different. So tell me how these five games went for you. It, it, was, it was nerve wracking, to be honest. And, you know, when I saw umpires, you know, doing their umpire shenanigans again, and then I saw Angel Hernandez was one of the umpires for the series. I about lost my marbles because <laughs> that man is just beyond horrible as an umpire. And then um, I started watching, uh, where the balls and strikes were actually being, you know, counted and Flores was horrible. Um, Hernandez was just about equally as horrible. And then, you know, seeing, just, just seeing how everything was playing out and just going, this, this is, this is not going to be good. This is just not going to be good. (laughs) This doesn't end well, folks. This doesn't end well. So you know, being, being a converted, converted Dodger fan from Giants fan, I'm just going, I can understand, I can feel their pain. I can, I can totally feel their pain. Like some games were good. Some games were bad. Some games they were on their A game, but you know what? Um, the Giants can't keep up their playing Dodger baseball because it's really how they won the season was playing Dodger baseball. This is literally the first season I have ever seen a Dodger manager or sorry, San Francisco manager actually play a bullpen game. Mm-hmm. They announced a bullpen game and I'm going, oh, okay. I see how you're doing this. Yeah. You can't win playing your own Giants game. You got to flip it to a to playing Dodger ball. Okay. That's, we got you, you know, and I was, I was so proud of Robert when he flipped the script on, on this last game and started playing small ball, because honestly, the guys were just swinging for the fences. And when we went up against Webb again, and I'm like, don't swing for the fences. This guy, you can't hit on this guy. You learn that, you know, you know, game two or game one was it game one. I can't remember. It's all blurred me. And, uh, I, I was just don't swing for the fences. And then when we finally started playing small ball, I was so happy. But that last call, was, it, it just, it shouldn't have ended that way. It really shouldn't have. So. Well, we're going to, we're going to get to that. I promise you that. Cause that's not the way that we ended it. I want to go back to something you just said though. So the Dodgers this season have done this bullpen game. I agree with you. But there are games where they live by the sword and die by the sword trying to go with the long ball. Yeah. And that would all call um, uh, Wingate, right? Which the game that was like totally windy and everything like that. So we had three, 
three game or three hitters, and Gavin Lux being the last one, that those balls would have gone out of the yard had the winds not been going 200 miles an hour. And I have to admit, when I saw Gavin swing, when I heard it, when I saw it leave the bat, I'm like, this is gone. And yeah. somehow or another, it just stuck up there with the wind. So you kind of, the Dodgers and Giants did play a little bit of that, live by the sword, die by the sword, by the long ball. Yeah. Um, Oracle Park is, Oracle Park, right? That's what they're calling it now, not at and Park. So Oracle Park um, is uh-huh. the most unique place, or one of the most unique places, because of that big right center field brick wall. And I mean, so many triples are in that. If you hit a triple at Dodger Stadium, you gotta you gotta have to to get your attention. You gotta have Trey, uh, sexy Turner, uh, or sexy slide Turner, um, you know, to get your triple. And yeah. I can get a triple at Oracle Park. I mean, and I haven't played, you know, organized baseball in thirty years. But I mean, I can get a or twenty five years. I can get a triple at Oracle Park because it's just there. But live by the sword, die by the sword. Yep. And I I think that's what really kind of turned the game for us this last game um, was that we started playing small ball and we started like when Bellinger hit that in the gap. I mean, they honestly were thinking that he was going to just try to get it out of the park because I saw the shift on. I really did. And when he hit it, oh, you saw a mad scramble and you saw panic in Kapler's face and that that was a telling moment and it was just it kind of like deflated the Giants so being a former Giants fan I'm just going oh goodness I can I can totally understand how the fans are feeling right now um I you heard it just kind of like hush over the over the ballpark and you know people are like I don't want to get too excited but I want to be excited and it was just kind of that nervous like oh my god I'm gonna throw up feeling and <laughs> I could totally understand it. I really could. Um, but, you know, now being a Dodgers fan, I'm just going, that was pretty brilliant. Yeah. And then to, I was not happy with uh, Taylor's bunt, to be honest with you. I thought that was a poor decision. However, it got the Giants in their head. And it I did get the Giants in their heads. It just, it baseball is a game of of inches. It's a game of mistakes. It's it's a game of a lot of things. I think that that bunt was a great idea, with the exception of, okay. So you have the shift on for Bellinger, right? Mm-hmm. Wilmer Flores, what they call crashes from first base, right? Which means he charges in from first base, right? Mm-hmm. The second that you see him crash, if you're Chris Taylor, you're supposed to pull the bat back and let Cody steal second. Because yep. what happens is the second baseman, where the second baseman is playing and the shortstop's playing, somebody's got to make a long run. They got to catch the ball perfectly and put that bag down. So yep. Taylor should have pulled the bat back, should have let Cody steal second, and then you've got what you needed out of it. So you're yep. second and third, um, you're second and third and one out still, right? And now you've got two batters, Chris Taylor, and, and it turned out to be Max Beatty, or I mean, Matt Beatty, um, you know, two shots, you get a base hit with second and third, and it's four to one. And that, yep. that Wilmer Flores thing doesn't happen, right? Exactly. Who cares? Yeah. And so, um, but I love the small ball. You just got to learn. And I remember, I, I won't mention any names here, but I remember talking with Ned Coletti. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> right. But I remember no names, right? But Ned Cletty. I remember sitting in with a good friend of ours who you know, sitting in a in a box. Um, and I think even your husband may have been there. Um, but we were sitting there and we were talking, and Ned um there was a play in the outfield and somebody overthrew the uh, cutoff guy and a run scored, like right as he was in this box talking with us. Yep. And there's probably 30 of us in there talking and he just shakes his head and he says, what we learned in February, we need to learn how to execute in July. Yeah. Meaning what we, what we practice in spring training needs yep. to be able to be executed at seven 30 at night in July. Yep. And when that overthrow happened and the same thing with Chris Taylor, what you practice in February, 
in spring training could come into play in October for your advancement. Exactly. And, the, and then we wouldn't be talking about controversial calls from umpires, you know, it's just, or okay. having petty Giants fans, you know, I, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to say this, hey. Giants fans were being so petty yesterday. They uh, actually were like eating their own. There was a, uh, an article on SF gate about a Giants fan in right behind home plate that they found annoying on how he was rooting for the giants i kid you not and i'm going wow "Wow, be happy that you had someone representing the team behind home plate who cares who who why how he's rooting for the team at least he's there and it's not you know not a Dodger fan, like really, or a Marlins fan just showing up, you know, randomly at every single uh, game, like we right. did how many years ago or still have. Yeah. That, guy, <laughs> that guy that shows up and he shows up with, I don't even want to know what she is, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. But it, he's completely just, it, decked out in Marlins gear and it's just not even a Marlins game and we're going... Wow, you must be a trust fund long. kid that gets a lot of good tickets. No, actually, he's a, he's a lawyer who just loves baseball. They did a uh-huh. whole article on him, and he just loves baseball. So he go he goes and he pays like a lot of money to go to every game. I'm like, oh, well, and and he knows that the Marlins won't be playing in October for a while. So, and, and he's got to get some baseball in. So you know, might as well watch the uh, World Champion. You know, Los Angeles, Los Angeles Dodgers. Dodgers. Okay, so let's talk about the let's talk for 90 seconds to two minutes about Wilmer Flores because I've been feed it, so I've been fielding text messages and phone calls since that play happened that night, since yeah. that play happened, and all of yesterday. If yeah, I showed you my you phone, I've got probably 30 text messages from 30 different people on what they think, and I've got my opinions, but I want to hear from you first what your thoughts are. I think it was the wrong call, to be honest with you. Um, do I think it would have mattered if he made the right call? No, I think Scherzer still would have gotten him out next pitch. Um, that's my opinion because Scherzer's the man. Um, yeah. But uh, was it the right call? No, he did not. He actually did check his swing. He did not swing fully and that is my opinion i i've seen it you know i i've like tried to rationalize it as a dodger fan and i'm just going i'm not going to rationalize no no we're going to look at baseball if we're going to if we're going to hold people accountable let's start holding our umpires accountable that was that was a check swing and you know i i posted something on instagram it's like now now everything's right you know this this totally makes up for the botched uh, check swing call that wasn't a check swing from Ruff during the regular season. So now the baseball universe is at balance. You know, I'm just trying to be cheeky, but it was the wrong call. It, it just plain and simple. It was the wrong call. So, so here's the interesting thing. So, so yesterday I showed it to my wife yesterday morning. I showed it to my wife. Um, I showed it to her real time, right? I okay. showed her a clip of it real time and she goes, I explained to her the rule, mm-hmm. right? And she goes, oh, he swung because of the way that he flips his wrist. He goes, oh, he swung. And then I showed it to her in slow motion with a different camera angle. And she goes, he didn't swing. But that guy down there at first base can't see that. He's got to see it in real time. Yep. That's number one. Number two, every person that's asked me this, the Giants had ample time to score. Buster Posey gets a double in the first inning. Brandon Crawford walks. Yep. You got two outs and a runner on second, and you can't get them in. Yep. At one point, they had first and second and nobody out. At one point, they had bases loaded and two outs. Yep. Bases loaded with two outs, you get a base hit, you get two runs. Yep. So it's not like it was a perfect game and it ended that way. No. The Giants had plenty. And so I was talking with um, somebody that, that you're familiar with that's been on top fan before that he has a son who will probably pitch in the MLB. He's getting heavily scouted right now and I asked him what he thought and what the conversations that he's been having with this boy and we both agreed the same thing right which is 
you should never allow a good call or a bad call from an umpire to dictate whether or not you won or lost. If you yeah. do, you lost. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what Kapler said. He said it wasn't, yeah, it was a bad call, but that wasn't the call that made the game. There were many factors that made them lose that game. And yeah. if we if we focus on that call, uh, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Let's focus on uh, everything you just said, uh, and then some. It's like Webb did not pitch as well as everyone was expecting him to. Um, he didn't go into the game as long as everyone expected him to. So um, you know, they, the Giants were literally depending on Webb to shut out the Dodgers, and that didn't happen. And when you start depending on one player to win a game, and then you start talking about a controversial call, um, no, absolutely not. You you can't do that. And yeah, this is baseball. I totally get it. And you're going to have bad calls. Umpires are not perfect. They're human. So just deal with it. Nope. Take your loss. Nope. Exactly. Move on. Cry into your pillows. It's fine. You know, exactly. there's always a big season. Exactly. And and what was interesting was if you can remember, I want to say it was late August or early September when the Giants were at LA and Brandon Ruff swung, yes. but they said no swing. And Dave Roberts got ejected. I think it was like in the eighth inning. Yep. The Giants came back and won that game. Yep. Um, Darren Ruff even has a comment, and I'm paraphrasing it, but he even has a comment that says, hey, one of those went our way earlier in the season, yep. right? And so, and I think that was the last game that the Dodgers and Giants played the season together. And I think yes. the Dodgers were were one game out of first place. Yes. And now they became two games out instead of being tied. Yep. Um, and Dave Roberts lost his marbles. And and I, so we all did. Yeah. That's why, by the way, that's why I hate instant replay. Yes. Let them make the mistakes. Yes. It's okay. Baseball's yeah. a game. Listen, you go to the Hall of Fame. If you get three hits out of every 10 at bats in your career, that listen, when I was in high school, if I got three answers right in a math test out of 10, I'm taking that class over again. Exactly. Exactly. So and, and you know, and you have to look at the the percentages of the accurate calls for these umpires. I mean, that's really key. And when you have umpires that have low accuracy percentages and when i say low accuracy i mean low 90s you should yeah. never have an umpire that has 93 percent accuracy rate in a postseason ever I, that's that's wrong and yeah. um because it postseason it, you need that accuracy. You need those those sharp eyes to see what's going on. And um, I'm I'm sorry, ninety three percent. That's not that's not good. It it really isn't. And everyone everyone would be like, oh, well, but that's actually okay. No, it's not. You want higher. The more accuracy, the better the calls will be. And that was what was so frustrating about all of this is that. You were calling strikes, balls, balls, strikes. And it's just like the strike zone just kept getting wider and wider. But, and yeah. But I have to tell you, Jamie, you know the best part about this? I'll tell you the best part about this, right? Mm -hmm. At least in my opinion. We're in the eighth inning. We're starting the eighth inning, yeah. right? Dodgers have one run and six hits. Giants have one run and six hits. Yep. Both of them have 109 wins this season. Yep. Like, pound for pound yep. this was just a great 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 series um now totally. if you're a dodger fan you went to the cardiologist friday morning after the game right um maybe a couple of times got some high <laughs> blood pressure medication and things like that no right? i doubled as your up husband on my said when pressure. i was texting him he says maybe we can get a discount right <laughs> um and so if you're a giants fan like it was death Calm five yeah. But it was so much, I mean, we didn't think what was great was we didn't think about what was going on in D.C. We didn't think about economies. We didn't think about, we were able to just enjoy America's favorite pastime. Yes. And for three hours, nothing mattered except for those 18 guys that were playing that game. Exactly. Exactly. And I, and I think that's why I love baseball 
so much mm -hmm. and it, it just it takes you out of reality for that for that short period of time and I have to say that focusing on on these teams or baseball and period you know period this the season has really helped me you know take a step away from what's going on in our mm -hmm. country which is anyway um yep. That's a different so, <laughs> but I, I am very, I'm very pleased. I think the giants did really, really good this season. Uh, we, you know, the Dodgers did such a great dance with them and, you know, they kept us on our toes and, um, the giants kept the Dodgers on their toes and we honestly, I, I think we came out better. I think it's really crappy that, um, we go to Atlanta first, even though we have a them, them's the rules. Right? I know we're the wild card team. That's I know that, it is what it is. But <sighs> here, but here's the thing. I agree with you, except all pressure on the all pressure on the Braves, right? Very true. And so, if we can get past tonight, then we get um, Walker Ferris Bueller tomorrow, right? right? And so, if we can take both of them in Atlanta then that means for Atlanta to have any chance of getting back to Atlanta, they have to take two out of three in LA. Yes. And that means they got to beat Mad Max and Julio Rios yep. in LA. So do we know who's starting tonight? I think it's Tony Goslin. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want Walker on three days rest. You definitely nope. don't want Mad Max. Uh, and you can't do a Rios. And nope. so no. it's got to be... It's got to be Goslin. Urias has, I, and I, honestly, I, I'm so proud of Urias. Like Julio is like amazing. I remember having this conversation with you uh, earlier in the season, and you're just like, I don't see Julio starting ever. I, like he's not a starter, and now he's starting. <laughs> it's just like this. I mean, he really blossoms. Like. Maybe he heard you on the radio. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I I had some pull in that. You know, I just I called him up and said, Julio, come with us. And like, he, you know, he told me how it was. And yeah. Okay, I'm looking at the uh oh wow, David Price isn't on the 26 man roster. No, he's not. And there there's there's a new name on there that I'm not quite familiar with. Evan Phillips. Yeah, and um, pool host at first, and there's no other alternate for first. That kind of uh, worries me. Max Beatty um, can play first. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven Sousa can play first. Chris Taylor can play first. Yeah, I and I, I totally understand that all of them can play first, but it's just you know, it it worries me that we're going to depend on pool host as much as I love. Our Tio, Albert, seriously, I want a pool holes hug. Like that's now on my bucket list. You can't get your pool holes hug. <laughs> I want a pool holes hug. Like seriously, want a pool holes hug because I'm like watching him with Cody and he's just holding Cody's face. Like you did it. You made it happen. And it was, it was just like this such beautiful moment. And I, I'm like, I want that from him. <laughs> I want a pool hole hug. <laughs> I'm constantly saying that. I'm like, I need a pool hole hug. <laughs> pool hole hug. Pool hole hug. <laughs> All right. So you got 90 seconds. Take me through the um, this series. What you hope. I mean, obviously you hope the Dodgers advance, but tell me what you're nervous about. Whatever you want to tell me. You got 90 seconds. Go. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm nervous that we're going to Atlanta. Um, it honestly. They just came off of a, a trip to San Francisco and now they have to go to Atlanta. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of travel for them. And um, historically we don't do well after like multiple travels. So um, that worries me. Um, but honestly, looking at the Braves record and our record, it, you know, I think that's going to be a wash to be, to, you know, I think, we are really good um, with our stats, um, especially our run stats. Uh, it just we outrun the rate the Braves like completely. Um, but yeah, I 
I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, tonight is going to be a, a very, very epic game. Um, and also, you know, I just want to plug in. I'm very happy that the Kings won against the Golden Knights on the same night that the Dodgers won against the Giants. So just wanna, I just want to put that out there. I mean, it was an awesome night for LA. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I am love not it. a fan of Vegas whatsoever. Um, their fan base sucks, but that's just my opinion. Uh, but Kings, I have always been a Kings fan. Uh, Gretzky all the way. And uh, so I'm just, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. So there's my 90 seconds. <laughs> there you go. I just got a text message as you were saying, go Kings go, basically. That looks like Corey uh, uh, Kim, uh, Kimbrell is starting tonight again. Okay. Yeah. And Goslin will get some time, but it looks that way. Um, okay. So let me we're you. doing a bullpen game. We got to. You got to mm -hmm. your your big yeah. three that needs some rest. Yeah. Um Fine. I, and we're, we're good at bullpen games. We that's that's how we've advanced in the season. I wasn't a fan of bullpen games to begin with, but I'm a fan now because it really gives the pitchers an opportunity um to see who who they can pitch against. And Roberts, like he can see which is better for you know who's good on who. So when it comes to relief time, he can just put in that ace in the hole. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, um, and as far as the Braves are concerned, I'm not worried too much about, you know, the Braves. It'll, you know, they've got a good team. Don't get me wrong, but um, I'm not too worried about them. Uh, you'll probably see T.O. Albert in the lineup tonight because Max Fries is starting. Um, and here's the thing about Max. All the pressure's on the Braves because they're starting at home, right? Even though the Dodgers are world champions, they're trying to repeat. They won 106 games in the season, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. All pressure on the Braves. Yep. Pitch count, pitch count, pitch count, pitch count. Yep. That's all I have to say. If yep. you can get, and I had this conversation with Jackson yesterday, if we can get maxed up to about 50 pitches after two innings, it's the Dodgers game. Yep. But if after two innings, he's got 23 pitches, uh, yeah. then that means he's going to play the whole game, you know, could go the whole game. We need to get, it's that pitch count. We need to go deep into counts. Yep. We need to not swing at first pitches. Corey Seager, are you listening to me? <laughs> right. Take a pitch. I love you, Corey. I hope you're not wearing a Yankees jersey next season. I love you, man. You better not be. Take a freaking pitch. Take a pitch. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh you know Mookie's Mookie's tearing it up so game one is is kind of crucial to us because we need to start off on that good foot right yep. because if we can get today's game then they got to face Walker Bueller tomorrow yep we could go home to nothing and then they got to face Max and Julio yep and up to nothing at home at Dodger Stadium yep so Okay, now my last question because we're running long, which is okay. You top <laughs> fans that are watching this, I hope you're enjoying it. Giddy up. I'm gonna brag about Jamie here in a second, but here, one last question, Jamie. Okay. Now just this is just between you and I, okay? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, you ready? You mean the fence post? Who do you want in the World Series? Oh crazy. Between us girls. Come on now. Oh goodness. Uh well, but both both potential teams are cheaters. So uh, uh, <laughs> honestly, I'd like to see the Red Sox because they came back in epically. Like seriously, they made some really good trades, and uh, they crushed it. Uh, however, I would love to see like this. this and I'm going to agree with my husband. I, I want to see. The asterisks, because I, I just want to beat them, you know. Like seriously, I, I, I just no cheating allowed, guys. So let's no, let's do it. No cheating allowed. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, hopefully we get through uh, this series, uh, you know, pretty unscathed. I I hope it doesn't go seven. I think it's going to go five, maybe six, maybe six, probably just five. Um, now, I, and I could be wrong. 
Now, top fans, if you haven't caught on yet, Jamie's got a bunch of articles up under the top fan um, articles. She's got one about being a converted uh, Dodger fan. She's got one about uh, being a female fan. She's got one about uh, 9-11 and her experiences being in the military with that. One of my favorites, she's got the one about Angel Hernandez, right? So if you haven't read these things, go on, read them, comment on them. We're, we're looking forward to your comments. Every time Jamie puts something in writing, it gets a lot of play. So that being said, Jamie, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to have you back on for a World Series edition, regardless of who's in the World Series. Oh, definitely. Uh, will you join me again for a World Series edition? Absolutely. Oh, and follow me, TFR Dodger fan. I'm on Instagram, um, Facebook, yes. and Twitter. Um, I need Twitter. more followers on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter. Yeah, there you go. So, I, and this video will go up actually on Twitter and Instagram later on today. So, we'll, I'm going to... I'm going to add your video in with Jackson's video and put them both in since he's a, a Braves fan. I had to get his opinion. Um, and so it was great. So Jamie, thanks so much for your time. Go Dodgers, right? Let's, let's, I mean, and if you're listening out there, T.O. Albert, Jamie needs a hug. I can connect you, the two of you guys together for a hug. Okay. Jamie needs a T.O. Albert hug. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Trey Turner, if you're in the building too, just stay away from Jamie because she might ask you to slide. All right. Top fans, we'll talk to you soon.